What's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you two additional ways that you can buy PLS, but I got to warn you right now, they're riskier. So first, before we go any farther, I just want to say, if you're going to use these two methods, just use a separate wallet. Do not use your primary cold wallet. You never know what can happen. The routes I'm going to show you right now are cheaper. Okay. So they're going to save you on bridge fees, but they're also going to be more risky because basically they're, they're centralized exchanges. Okay. And we all know CEXs are naughty. They're bad. They they're known for going down all the time or stealing people's money, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Anyway, let's dive right into it. The two websites I'm talking about are bitcointry.com and then kanga.exchange, kanga.exchange, bitcointry.com. So these are the two places where you can actually send Arbitrum USDC. And I'm going to explain what that means in one second. Uh, Bitcoin Tri claims it's like a, a CEX and a DEX and mixed together. It's basically a CEX, okay? Just treat it like this one. It's not that much of a DEX. Same with Kanga, okay? The Bitcoin Tri is a little bit newer. I think they just listed PLS about a month ago. So it's nice to see people listing Pulse and, and PulseX and Hex as well. So Kanga, on the other hand, they've actually had Pulse Chain, PulseX, and Hex listed since day one. Watch if we search for Pulse right here. Look, you've got PLS. Paul, hex from Pulse Chain and Pulse X. You even got you even got both hexes here, which is very cool. It's very nice of Kanga to be uh, supportive of the ecosystem. And by the way, the daily withdrawal limits. Just gonna say this right now for no KYC for Kanga, two Bitcoin. And in Pulse terms, that basically means that they let you withdraw up to a billion Pulse a day, which is like a hundred thousand dollars a day with no KYC. I'm just gonna say that do with that what you will uh this one i don't think this has any limits either i haven't tested the limits on this but you, you basically connect your wallet to this site and again that's why you got to be careful use a separate wallet you never know okay you never know but you connect your wallet here and then you go trade for pls on the markets and it behaves like a centralized exchange and then you withdraw the pls back out to your wallet as we know guys as the saying goes centralized exchanges are like public bathrooms you don't want to spend any more time than you have to in there so Let's go to Coinbase. Okay, let's assume you have a Coinbase. This is your centralized exchange, your fiat on and off ramp. A lot of people have Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini, Crypto.com. They're all more or less the same. And what you're going to do is you're basically going to go buy a bunch of USDC. All right, because USDC on Coinbase, at least, it's got the cheapest fees. You can withdraw USDC off of Coinbase with zero fees. So you just connect your bank account, right? And you just convert, let's say, I don't know, $1,000. You could pick $100 or click these buttons. Get your USDC. You've probably done this before. And first, we're going to do the Bitcoin try method. All right, I'm just going to briefly go over it. So for the Bitcoin try.com method, you need to send the USDC out to your wallet. So I've got Rabby wallet here. I'm going to copy my address. Look how I copied it up there. MetaMask is fine. Internetmoney.io is also fine. All, all these wallets are fine. So it doesn't matter which one you have. Click transfer up here in the corner, right? And assuming you have some USDC, you're going to get that USDC out of Coinbase or whatever other exchange you have it on and say, send crypto, right? Send crypto. So I just got myself $4 worth just to show you guys. Then you transfer it out. Okay. You send the crypto and you say, I want to send all this crypto, but in the two field right here, watch this. Look where my mouse is. When you click on this, you want to make sure that when you're selecting the method, you want to make sure you're sending USDC on the Arbitrum network for this. Arbitrum is going to give you the cheapest fees. Look, it's actually free to withdraw out of Coinbase. So no fees at all. And it's just like a layer two, so it's just cheaper. So you click Arbitrum right here. You paste your crypto wallet address here. Remember, for Bitcoin try, you're sending it to your wallet. You're sending it to your wallet. And then you just do that. Confirm. And I'm not going to do this right now because I've already done this, but you just send it out there to your wallet. Then you hop over to Bitcoin try. Once you're on Bitcoin try, you go ahead and connect your wallet and you just have to sign a signature. So uh, I've got Rabby. I'm just going to go click other wallet. It takes like five, 10 seconds to do this. And you're just signing a message to verify that you own this wallet. So I click sign this message. And again, this is all very risky. I want to highlight that one more time. Use a separate hot wallet. You call it a condom wallet if you want. When you're using new apps, new software, don't use your main cold wallet. You never know. And also, uh, I'm assuming you're doing this all on a crypto only laptop. You should all just have a crypto only laptop. I'm going to say that on repeat because some people do it on their phone and I, it blows my mind. Anyway, deposit. Okay. Now you're going to go deposit money. Remember, because we, we just got that USDC on the Arbitrum network. And if you wanted to see that, right, you would go d dig into your wallet and look at the Arbitrum coins. Like my mouse is over here. This is how it looks on Rabby where your Arbitrum coins are at. And you can see I've got 50 cents worth of Arbitrum based USDC. And because it's on this network, again, the, it's faster and cheaper. So deposit the coins, click deposit in the top right corner. 
you're going to select instead of USDT, you're going to select USDC here. Okay. And you're depositing this USDC select network, pick Arbitrum one. Okay. Pick Arbitrum one here and deposit with web three wallet. Yes. And then you just click the maximum amount of USDC that's in your wallet that you just sent to your wallet from Coinbase. So max would be 50. And when you submit deposit right here, you submit deposit, it should successfully come up with, look, your uh, MetaMask or Rabi will come up. You confirm that and you basically transfer the USDC coins into your, your wallet on the Bitcoin Tri platform. You can see I've done this in the past. It's very, very quick, right? very, very quick. I basically deposited like $10 worth of USDC. $10, by the way, is the minimum trading fee on Bitcoin Tri. So you should probably be buying more than $10 uh, just in case. I mean, why wouldn't you? Now, I want to make this very clear. All the PLS pairs on both these exchanges are in USDT. So you need to convert your USDC to USDT. Okay, go to trade and then go to pro trade, pro trade. And now instead of, remember, we don't have USDT yet, but the pairing for Pulse is in USDT. We need to go convert all that USDC. So just search USDC, USDT, find this pair right here. Okay, click on this pair. Because remember, we're just converting one stable coin for another. Then you're going to go up here in the top right corner and you're going to sell all that USDC that you just had in here. You're going to sell all of it. Click hundred percent for USDT. Okay. And it's going to tell you also do a market buy. Don't bother with limit orders. Really just market. Make sure you click market sell for USD, USDC for USDT. And you're going to click this sell button right here. Now I don't have enough right now, but I've already done that, right? I already went through this process before just to make sure that it worked. Everything works fine. As far as I can tell. Now, after you've done that, then you can hop over, search for PLS in this drop down menu. PLS USDT, click on this. This is the USDT PLS pair. Then you can buy however much PLS you want. Again, click on market order. You could do a limit order if you really want to as well, but I'm just going to do a market order 100%. And I can see, you know, 27 cents. Well, it looks like it, it looks like it's telling me my minimum order should be three US dollars or above. So if you want to buy Pulse, you have to have at least three dollars in your wallet. Now you can see I've already bought 118,456 PLS. So I've already done those steps. So let's go do the withdraw step. And we're going to make sure that we go through this very carefully. You need to withdraw the Pulse back out to your wallet. So to do that, we click on wallet up here on the top, click on wallet, and then we click withdraw, withdraw right here. And what is, what's the asset we're withdrawing? It's PLS. You could just search for PLS Pulse Chain. Now they also list Pulse X, and I think they also list Hex. Let's just find out. Yep, they list Hex as well. And if you were wondering, that's that's Hex on the Pulse Chain network, not the E Hex. Okay, it's Hex on the Pulse Chain network. Anyway, we have PLS Pulse Chain. Obviously, we have to send it on the Pulse Chain network. Our wallet address should automatically fill in here, and we're just going to withdraw the maximum. It says the minimum amount to withdraw is ten thousand Pulse, and the maximum amount is uh, it looks like 10 billion. So 10 billion, that, that's a very high maximum withdrawal fee. 10 billion is almost like a, a million dollars. So that's a lot. That's a very high withdrawal fee. I'm nowhere near that. So I'm just going to go, I'm just going to withdraw 10,000 coins. All right. 10,000 coins. There's a very small fee. I mean, there's a 1500 pulse network fee. Okay. So I'm going to get 8,500 pulse back. It's only like, I don't know, a dollar or something. Submit the withdrawal. You sign the signature in your wallet again. So I click sign and create, confirm that signature. And my withdrawal request is being reviewed. Reviews can take up to six hours. And so we're just going to close this and see, look down here, it's pending. We see we're waiting for the transaction. I'll let you guys know how long that takes. Let's also just hop over to Kanga to explain how that goes really quick as well. So for Kanga, once you make an account on the Kanga exchange, you're going to go to your wallet tab up here, wallet. And then you're going to go to deposit right here where my mouse is click deposit. Now the currency we're depositing, remember, is USDC, uh, USDC Arbitrum. So once you click on USDC coin, right, go to network, make sure you have Arbitrum network selected. Now this exchange is going to give you an exchange address. This is like most centralized exchanges. Okay, remember, these are dirty places. They're extremely risky. Again, you're doing this, you're, you're, you're taking on this risk for the potential to save, I don't know, 20 to $50 in gas fees, which you would have to do by bridging uh, on the native Ethereum to Pulse Chain bridge. So this is your exchange wallet. So instead of sending to our regular wallet, we're going to send the Arbitrum from Coinbase. We're going to send that USDC on Coinbase to the Kanga exchange on the Arbitrum network. So we're going to, again, go to transfer, send crypto. Let's say I want to send $4 and I want to send it to, remember, we have to click Arbitrum again. Make sure you click on Arbitrum because if you're sending on the wrong network, you could lose money. You could lose all your coins. 
click Arbitrum. Now here, we are not typing in our personal wallet address. That's the only difference between Kanga and Bitcoin Tri. So the Kanga, you have the exchange address that you just got over here, 0xc3b, 0xc3b, and you just send it that way. Now I've already done this for you guys, but it does take probably less than two minutes. It's actually very fast to get these coins off uh, via Arbitrum. So that's gonna show up in your wallet within like two to three minutes. You're gonna see on your balances. Now, I've already done the process, but guess what guys? You have to do the same thing over again. You have to swap USDC for USDT. Why is that? It's because the main pulse chain pair on the trading platform is PLS USDT. Most other countries actually use USDT, all right? And only America really uses USDC. So you're gonna go to the markets. Okay, you're going to go to the trading platforms and we actually just have to search for that down here as well. USDC, we don't want USDC slash PLN, we want USDT slash USDC. Remember, because we just want to get rid of our USDC and trade it one for one with USDT. And then you'll do a market buy for USDT. You'll market buy the entire amount, however much you have. I've only got 70 cents right now. Then you can buy it right there. Now, again, your, your orders must be greater than $5 and I've already done this. Okay, I've already exchanged my USDC for USDT. Once you have that done, go ahead and search for PLS up in the top right box over here. You'll see PLS, USDT, and remember they also offer PulseX, they also offer HEX. This one actually offers both HEXs. So PLS, USDT, click on this pair. Then you swap your, you buy PLS. I like to just do market orders, I don't really care because I don't want to be on here a long time. The longer you're on here, guys, the more risk you're putting yourself at. These exchanges go down all the time. Sometimes they'll, they might freeze your account. So I'm not saying this is a better way. It's a cheaper way, but it's actually a worse way. I mean, you're getting what you pay for. So you're exposing yourself to this huge risk. And uh, that's why I'm just talking about getting the coins off and explaining how to do that as fast as possible. So you market by PLS with however much USDT you have, you know, put that in there, buy the pulse, go back to your wallet up here on the top. Okay, go back to your wallet, click on withdraw, select the currency you wanna withdraw. I've only got pulse chain and some stables. You can see I've already bought 116,000 PLS. We're gonna do an external transfer to a Pulse Chain network wallet. It's already got Pulse Chain here. Look, the maximum withdrawal is uh, 1 billion. So that's pretty nice. Again, these are non-KYC. These are up to two Bitcoin a day. So pretty, pretty large withdrawal amounts. Just wanna put that out there. And the minimum is 50,000. So we're gonna go ahead and just withdraw 50,000. And we're gonna go here and we're gonna copy our public address, we're gonna go put it in here. So this is me copying and pasting my wallet address to make sure that I get this pulse back out. Gonna click continue, okay, click continue. So now we know this pulse is going back to my wallet and it's gonna be safe. Lower than the threshold, huh? Maybe 50,001. Oh, it's because of the fee. All right, so we'll do 52,000. 52,000. And look, confirmation link has been sent to your email. I'm gonna go confirm that in my email address that I used to sign up. I'm confirming the withdrawal right now. I'm gonna go refresh this page. I'm gonna go look at my transfers tab and it says, look, we're just awaiting verification. So look, it might take a couple of minutes to withdraw. And this is the risky part right here is you never know if they're gonna shut off withdrawals. I've had it happen on other centralized exchanges. Basically, I don't trust any centralized exchange and neither should you. You should never, ever, ever trust them. But this is the risk you're taking for uh, potentially lower gas fees. And right now the gas fees on Ethereum are actually pretty cheap. All right, it's actually not that bad right now. But when Ethereum starts heating up, you know, when, when Ethereum's at $8,000, people might be complaining a lot about gas fees. All right, let's go hop back to Bitcoin Try. We could see, there we go. As I was talking in the past five minutes, we've got a completed withdrawal. So you could see 10,000 PLS actually came out and went back to my wallet. So there it goes, back to my wallet. I see it in there, I didn't have that much before. So that works very quickly. Bitcoin try, I was able to do that within less than 10 minutes. So that's good to know that the withdrawals actually work. But look, anything could happen. This site could go down. They could say any arbitrary reason that they want to shut you off. Let's go back here. Let's refresh this page. I don't know how long this withdrawal is going to be pending for. And because I don't want to bore you guys with how long this is actually going to be pending, I'll just wait till it finishes. And then in the description of the video, I'll tell you how long it took. So you can say, you know, ask yourself whether or not you actually want to do this method. There you have it, guys. Kanga.exchange, BitcoinTry.com. It's good to see other platforms supporting PLS. You know, people complain about we don't have centralized exchanges and stuff. We actually do. Okay, we, we, we've had one since day one. It's just that it's a European exchange. Uh, no one really uses it. 
And for good reasons, because it's uh, you want to have all your coins in real DeFi. You want to be doing all your trading on PulseX.com, the DEX, the decentralized exchange. This is just your on and off ramp temporarily. Uh, and really, if you're using bigger amounts, you know, it's probably actually just better to pay the uh, the $20 gas fee to go across the bridge. You know, my previous method, the video pinned to my channel, buying Ethereum on Coinbase, sending it to your wallet, bridging it. That's going to be the better method, really just from a safety point of view. And you have to pay a little bit higher fee for that safety. But there you have it, guys. Again, check out the description below if you want to know how long this transaction took. And I hope you learned something new about some potential alternative ways to buy hacks for cheaper fees. But one more time, I can't stress this enough, higher risk. Withdraw your coins off of centralized exchanges as soon as humanly possible. Do not leave them there longer than you have to. Because if something bad happens, don't say I didn't warn you. Thanks, like, subscribe, share the video, leave a comment. I will see you on the next one.